Hi, this is Matt Baker. Today, I've got some exciting news to share with you. As you might know, a few years ago, one of my charts, the Timeline of World History, was published for the very first time as a book. Of course, we usually sell our charts as posters, uh, but a company called Unipress developed this really cool format that combines various fold-out sections with regular book pages. So we've been working with them to make several of our most popular charts available in book format. And this timeline of world history was the first of these. Well, this week we are releasing a second book, the timeline of the British monarchy. And note that since we changed the cover design for this one, uh, we've also redesigned the cover for the timeline of world history so that they match. Both of these are available right now on our website, usefulcharts.com. Or if you happen to live in Vancouver, you can drop by our store on Commercial Drive. We're now open seven days a week from noon to 4 p.m. Okay, so for the rest of this video, I'm going to show you uh, what the inside of this new book looks like because it happens to include several charts that have never before been seen on this channel. So let's get to it. Okay, so let's take a look at this book together. The first thing I want to point out is you can see here uh, the two authors are listed. I am, of course, Matt Baker, um, and I made the charts in this book. However, uh, another author named Anthony Mason, uh, he provided the text, which I'll show you in a moment, uh, which goes in between some of the charts. So that's why there's two people listed on the cover. You'll also notice just like my Timeline of World History book, uh, there's this elastic band sort of thing. And um, that's just so that since, since there are a lot of charts inside, um, if they get a bit untidy, you can put that on and kind of just make sure that everything um, stays together nice and safe. So let's go ahead and open the book up and take a look. So the first thing is the removable chart which is all folded up, but can be unfolded. Um, and when you unfold it, it is about the same size as the posters that we sell on our website. Um, and this one is the timeline of British monarchy, which is the title of the book. So this is the main chart that comes uh, with the book. And you might recognize this one because we did sell a chart that looked a bit similar to this um, for Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee. I had a limited edition poster that basically covered um, just the British monarchy. Um, if you're a longtime follower of the channel, you know that one of the main charts we sell is the European royal family tree, which of course has Great Britain, UK, but all the other European countries. But this one, just the British monarchy. Now, the big difference, of course, between this one and the one we sold previously is that it does include this big change here. This book actually, um, we were working on this book when the queen died. Um, so we were able to make the change to put in her regnal dates and to add Charles III as the new and current monarch there at the bottom. So yes, in this book, you are going to get an up-to-date chart. Okay, so this chart, the main chart, covers well over a thousand years of history. Um, we have here at the top, Alfred the Great, who helped unite the Anglo-Saxon uh, kingdoms. Uh, but then we also have Kenneth McAlpin uh, from what is now considered Scotland. So this truly is a timeline of the British monarchy, not just the English monarchy. And you'll notice here uh, in green, you've got uh, some of the Welsh monarchs before Wales became a part of England. Um, one difference uh, you'll notice on this chart as compared to the one we used to sell is you've got dates here throughout. Uh, and this is because this is, although this is a family tree chart, it's also meant to be kind of a timeline. So some important dates when things changed from royal house to royal house or certain kingdoms merged, uh, the dates are there nice and big and easy to find. 
So I won't go through this entire chart because I've already done a video on the British monarchy all the way from Alfred the Great and Kenneth McAlpin to Charles III. Um, but basically you can see things start out here as the Kingdom of England and we have the Kingdom of Scotland separately. And then here you have the various Plantagenet kings who conquered Wales and then the Principality of Wales becomes part of England. If you know your British history, you'll know that, of course, the Kingdom of England and the Kingdom of Scotland eventually came to be ruled by uh, the same monarch. Um, so under the House of Stuart, um, all of these individuals were kings both of England and Scotland and actually Ireland as well. Um, but then eventually um, the two kingdoms merge to become the United Kingdom of Great Britain. So you'll notice that prior to this kind of union of the crowns, England is in red, Scotland is in blue, Wales is in green. But then after the blue and red kind of come together, everything changes to purple, which represents Great Britain. Um, and then the name gets changed to the United Kingdom. So again, I won't go through all of this, but I basically wanted to show you what it looked like. And again, we can fold this up and then it can go back into this pocket here. Okay, so then we get the title page and table of contents. And we get a few initial pages that just talk about um, the British monarchy in general, how it all works, some customs and rituals, a bit about the various palaces. And again, you see dates throughout because this, this is meant to be a timeline series. So attention is always paid to uh, the date. Um, here's some information about various charities that the royal support and their global reach. But then here's where things really begin. So there's four main sections in this book and each section comes with its own foldout chart and it's done chronologically by period. So the first period is all about the Anglo-Saxons and here you'll see how it works. Um, this is a foldout chart that it doesn't come out of the book, but basically you open it up like this, you go like this first of all, and then a top page goes like that and the bottom page folds out like that. So I can't fit it all on screen so let me just pull it up so you can see the top. So this chart when it folds out is about three feet long I think and I think it's 18 inches across. So this is all about the Anglo-Saxons and I have used a chart uh, similar to this before on the channel when I did a video on the Anglo-Saxon kings prior to Alfred the Great. Um, but the colors are a bit different on this version. And you can see everyone here is red because they're all what will become known as England. Uh, whereas the few Scottish kings are in blue and once again, Wales is in green. So prior to Alfred the Great, we actually had seven kingdoms in what is today England. So this chart charts all of their various monarchs separately. So you can say, follow the Kingdom of Wessex, which is the royal line that eventually comes to rule all of England. But you could also follow uh, the Kingdom of Mercia, uh, which was its own independent kingdom. And they had a king named Offa, who was quite powerful. Um, so this, this chart is really cool because this part of the British monarchy chart um, is not shown on the European Royal Family Tree West chart. So if you want this um, chart of the Anglo-Saxon kings, it's only available in the book. Now, nearer to the bottom of this chart though, we do get the um, part where Alfred the Great helps unify the various Anglo-Saxon kingdoms, and eventually uh, the whole thing becomes known as England. But you'll notice here on the left side, um, you've got several of the important Welsh monarchs. They didn't always use 
the title king. Some of them were princes, some of them were kings, and what they were king of changed quite a bit. So you can see all their various titles and how they relate to each other. Um, we do have a video about the various Welsh monarchs and the, those who held the title Prince of Wales before uh, the title Prince of Wales became part of um, England's system of titles. So if, if you're interested in Welsh monarchs, again, uh, this book is a great source for you because a lot of these Welsh monarchs aren't on any of our other charts or posters. Again, of course, we got Scotland over here, some of the very early kings of Scotland. So this particular chart, since it's focusing on the Anglo-Saxon period, ends around the time of Edward the Confessor um, and Malcolm III over in Scotland. So the next chart is going to con continue where this one ends. But let's go ahead and fold this back up. So this folds up and then this folds down. This folds across and then you can keep reading the book. So that's why this particular format is really cool and unique. Okay, so let's just flip through some of these pages. We have a whole section here about Roman Britain and then the Heptarchy. Those are the seven Anglo-Saxon kingdoms before they were united. Got some information about the Vikings and then all about Alfred the Great, uh, the only British monarch to have that um, in addition to his name there, the Great. Um, the last of the Saxons, problems of succession. But then here, look, we've got a whole section about Wales and a whole section about Scotland. So again, I just want to emphasize that this book does not just focus on England, like uh, unfortunately some British monarchy books do, but lots on, on Wales and Scotland. Ireland, however, not so much. Um, so uh, do keep that in mind. Because Irish history is quite a bit um, removed, albeit related to the history of the island of Great Britain, but a um, little bit different. So this, this focuses mostly on the island of Great Britain. Okay, which brings us to the next major section, and that is the Normans and the Plantagenets. So here we have a nice photo of William the Conqueror. And again, chart opens up the same way. And this chart begins about where the other one left off, although it actually begins a little bit before that with Rollo the Viking, who was the ancestor of William the Conqueror. So basically, Rollo the Viking came and took over some territory in what is today in northern France, which became known as Normandy. And then eventually, William the Conqueror of Normandy uh, came over to England and conquered that territory there. And so uh, his line then uh, takes over. But again, if you know anything about your British history, and especially the family tree of the British royals, um, although all the British royals can trace uh, their lineage back to William the Conqueror, they can actually also trace their lineage back to the old Anglo-Saxon kings. Um, so this, this line here would continue back to that previous chart we were looking at. Um, but this line eventually marries into the Scottish line. And then a Scottish princess marries a Norman. And so therefore, um, those two branches of the family eventually do get united. So the Plantagenets descend from both the Normans as well as those earlier Anglo-Saxon kings. Um, so you can see here again, we've, we've got Scotland still separate over here. We've got lots of interesting um, and important Welsh kings. Uh, at this part of the chart, I've introduced the coat of arms symbols because this is approximately when they start getting used. So of course we have the three lions for England, the one red lion for Scotland. And then this is actually just the coat of arms for um, North Wales, the kingdom of Gwynedd. Uh, but then of course, Wales is conquered by Edward the first. Scotland uh, is conquered as well, but then gains back its independence. So that's why we still have Scottish kings continuing. 
this section here, we get the Wars of the Roses. And that's all laid out nicely. Again, I'm not going to go through uh, king by king because uh, I've done that elsewhere, but just showing you basically everything that's included here. See the white rose and the red rose and then the House of Tudor, which, by the way, also connects back to some of the earlier Welsh kings. So these charts are pretty detailed and shows they do show all the major and interesting connections. All right, so we'll fold that back up and keep going. So this is the Norman and Plantagenet section. Um, so obviously we have the Hundred Years' War being mentioned here, something about Robin Hood. Um, so another big spread on Wales. Lots of great images in the book as well as charts. It's about Scotland and wars of independence there. Ah, here's the section on the Hundred Years' War. The Wars of the Roses. There's the princes in the tower, Richard III. Okay, let's now look at the third main section. The third main section covers the Tudors, the Stuarts, and the Hanoverians. So here we have uh, George IV. And once again, let's open it up this way. So this chart starts where the previous one left off. Um, we've got the two coats of arms, one for England and one for Scotland. You can note here that now England is using the coat of arms that has the French fleur-de-lis symbols because of the Hundred Years' War and their claim on France. Um, so we start here with the House of Tudor. We've got the House of Stuart ruling in Scotland. You've got Henry VIII. And of course he had six wives, but we only have three shown here because these are the three that he had children with. Uh, we've got Mary, Elizabeth, uh, Queen Elizabeth I and Edward and Mary Queen of Scots. And then this major event here, after the death of Elizabeth I, we get the Union of the Crowns. And that's when James VI of Scotland also became James I of England. So that's why we switch from red and blue to purple here. And we also here have the Commonwealth period. Uh, mentioned where Oliver Cromwell um, basically ruled instead of the monarchy. Um, but of course, Britain decided to restore their monarchy, or I guess at this point, England and Scotland did. And so we have the rest of the steward period. Uh, we even have some of the Jacobites who claimed the throne separate from uh, what would become the Hanoverians. But you can see here quite clearly how the Hanoverians also descend from James VI and I. A lot of people mistakenly think that the, um, the British monarchs today are of only German descent, but although there is some German uh, genealogy, obviously, there's also British. So George I, when he took over he was, in fact, a descendant as well of all these earlier um, British monarchs. Okay, so one thing you'll notice is that um, this chart is far more detailed than any other chart that we sell. So, for example, on the European Royal Tree West chart, obviously we have the main monarchs of Great Britain and then the United Kingdom. But here we have a lot more um, of the siblings, uh, princes and princesses. Uh, and some of the marriages on this chart, all the queens um, or uh, consorts have their uh, photos, not photos, paintings as well. So, I mean, if you're really interested in the British monarchy in particular, uh, this book definitely um, goes into things in much greater detail than on any other chart. So at this point, um, during the reign of George III, Great Britain becomes known as the United Kingdom. 
And you can see there's a slight difference here between the two flags. This is the Great Britain flag, and you've got the Scottish flag and the English flag combined. But the UK flag is actually slightly different because it also has the Irish flag. It's the diagonal red cross. As you probably know, the line eventually ends up going through George III's fourth son, Edward. Uh, it passed directly from William IV to Queen Victoria, who was the daughter of this Edward, Prince Edward, the son of George III. So Victoria, of course, became one of the longest reigning British monarchs of all time. In fact, she was the longest reigning until quite recently when Queen Elizabeth uh, passed her record. So on this chart, it shows Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. Um, their portraits are when they are quite young, but they will be seen on the next chart with slightly different portraits. And I'll show you that in a moment, but first let's close that one up and look through this section. So we've got Henry VIII and his six wives, the Elizabethan age, Elizabethan age, which of course was kind of a golden age for England. That's when Shakespeare was around. And this whole spread is about the union between England and Scotland. And then we have a whole section about the Civil War. Poor old King Charles I lost his head. And we have the period of the Commonwealth, but then the Restoration and the Glorious Revolution. Then things switch over to the House of Hanover. That's George I. And some more details about the various Hanoverians. Then we come to the final section, which goes from Vic Queen Victoria to today, and it's called Royal, Royal Record Breakers. Um, of course, Queen Elizabeth II ends up breaking Victoria's record and becoming the longest reigning British monarch of all time. So let's open up this final chart. All right, so like I said, we again start with Albert and Victoria. However, this time uh, their portraits are of them when they're a bit older. And you can see what the coat of arms looked like uh, during the Victorian period, obviously much more detailed than it was earlier. And you can see all of their various children. We've got images of each one of them. And I've also shown how um, four other monarchs, uh, King Philippe VI of Spain, Margrethe II of Denmark, Carl Gustav of Sweden, and Harold V of Norway. All of these currently reigning monarchs all uh, trace back to Queen Victoria. So we've shown those connections as well. But of course, the main line continues here. Uh, from Victoria to Edward VII to George V, and then we get Edward VIII, Wallace Simpson, George VI, and of course Queen Elizabeth, her husband Philip, that's her sister Margaret, and their children. Now you'll note that when we get to this part of the chart, you'll see all these numbers, and these numbers represent the current line of succession to the British throne. So this is up to date as of 2023. So Charles III is here as Charles III, not Prince Charles. And his son William is here as Prince of Wales, and he's number one in the line of succession. Then his kids, numbers two, three, and four, Prince Harry at five, and so forth. And then at the bottom is just a little graphic of Buckingham Palace. So you can see that combined all of these uh, four foldout charts, you go all the way from the earliest Anglo-Saxon kings all the way down to today, King Charles III. So let me just show you the last few pages. 
We have a spread here all about the Victorian period, the Imperial period where um, the United Kingdom was at its greatest extent ruling a good portion of the world. Uh, then we've got a section here about the war period. And the new queen, there's Queen Elizabeth and then Prince Charles being crowned the Prince of Wales. A little section here about Prince Philip. The new Elizabethan age. We even have a photo of Queen Elizabeth II celebrating her platinum jubilee. So that would be 70 years on the throne. And we've got something here about the future of the monarchy as well. And I believe this is the the final page yeah. in the book and the rest is the index. So it's about 80 pages all together. And of course you get five charts in total. So the big main chart and then four fold out charts. So that was a look at uh, our latest book, the timeline of the British monarchy. Like I say, if you want to get your copy, you can head over to our website, usefulcharts.com. Or if you happen to live in Vancouver, you can drop by our warehouse. We have a tiny little store in the front uh, where you can pick up any of our posters or any of the books. Um, we're open from noon to 4 p.m. every day of the week. We're closed on holidays, uh, but feel free to drop by and say hello. Otherwise, it's on the website. So hope you enjoyed having a look at that. Thanks for watching.